Welcome to Stillwater and Boone Pickens Stadium, where two of the most explosive offensive teams in the nation meet today. It's Oklahoma State taking on Baylor, and they are fired up in Cowboys country. Oklahoma State is number three in the Tostitos BCS standings. They also know that next week, either number one or number two will have a loss. So if the Cowboys win out, they are all but guaranteed a spot in the BCS title game. A lot on the line as we welcome you to Stillwater, everyone. Bob Wachusett alongside the coach, Bob Davey. Janine Edwards will join us in just a moment. It's there for Oklahoma State. Their dream season, it's now attainable. The fans here know it. You think the players know it. They have a big test out in front of them, though, today with Baylor. One thing about Oklahoma State, they don't follow that old school plan for success. We used to talk all the time, Shu, about defense wins championships. Forget about all that. Around here, it's all about the offense. Their offense, an up-tempo, fast-paced, no-huddle, two superstars in Brandon Whedon and Justin Blackman. A lot of people don't realize a big reason for their success. First in the nation in turnover margin. Their defense may have poor overall stats, but they've forced a lot of turnovers. Shoe around here, it's all about the defense. Just get the ball back for the offense because you know this offense can score touchdowns. Plus 15 in the takeaway ratio. Number one in the country in interceptions. It's a defense that is opportunistic. It's an offense that lives off of those opportunities, and they've got a quarterback that can play. Boy, we watched Brandon Whedon yesterday, both of us, for the first time. I think the first thing you're going to notice about him as a fan at home, how quickly he gets the ball out. You can tell he was a baseball player. He was a pitcher in the majors, but he actually was a shortstop as a young man. He gets the ball out of his hands as fast as any quarterback I have seen. I mean, this is a quick-paced offense, Oklahoma State. Yeah, Mike Gundy actually compared him to someone almost turning a double play. Exactly. When you look at how quickly he's able to release the football. And speaking of quickly, we are expecting the Cowboys to take the field any moment here at Boone Pickens Stadium as this place has been packed for the last several hours. Number three in the country. Here come the Cowboys. Oklahoma State won the toss, and they deferred their option to the second half. So Robert Griffin will start with the football first. Bob Shoes and Bob Davey and Janine Edwards here at Boone Pickens Stadium. What a scene. Homecoming, and they put on about as good a homecoming show here in Stillwater as any place in America. And Quinn Sharp will send it deep to Antoine Goodley. We expect a shootout this afternoon. And a line drive kick. Could give some field position to Baylor. Levi Norwood off the hop instead. He's all the way out to about the 31-yard line before he stood up. Joe Mitchell made the stop on special teams for Oklahoma State. So, it's RG3, number one in the country in completion percentage. Not a bad touchdown-to-interception ratio as well when you're talking about 22-2. to two. Two great quarterbacks in this game. I think the difference, Robert Griffin throws the ball down the field a lot more than Brandon Wheaton. And that's why it's important for Baylor to get this run game going so they can set up play action because nobody does it better than Robert Griffin. Kendall Wright is at the bottom of your picture, closest in the trips to the near side, but they'll start on the ground with Terrence Ganaway. And he picks up about six yards on first down, so second down and four. Upcoming for Baylor. Baylor's been inconsistent running the ball. They've run it really well at times, but in their losses at Kansas State and AM, they've not been very productive running. And Mark Ganaway down at the 35, so it's second and five. And here's Griffin's first attempt. Then he finds a slant to Kendall Wright. He breaks a tackle, and he's got a first down in plus territory. So already the combination of Griffin and Kendall Wright moves the chains. To taste already of how fast paced this is going to be and how explosive these skill players are in this game. A little bubble screen. They get it back in the hands of Wright. And Wright's down the sideline, close to another first down. Coach, we could end up seeing a 160 to 170 play game, right? Yeah, I'll tell you the other thing. We might turn this right away. You heard the Red River rivalry. This may be the bubble bonanza. You may see more <laughs> bubble screens in this game from both teams. The officials had not put the ball ready for play yet, and Baylor was ready to go. 
Okay, these officials. So no snap. Please reset the play clock to 25 seconds. Play clock and again clock will start on my signal. You're an official in the Big 12. You better stay hydrated because you're out for, you, you, you got a full day's work ahead of you just getting that ball spot because both these teams want to get up there and go. The officials in this game could conceivably run the New York City Marathon <laughs> next week. They are that well conditioned. Play clock down to 10. Second down and two. Right up the middle, a first down carry for Ganaway as we take a look at today's Baylor Impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Well, we said it's important for Baylor to run that ball and be balanced. I think we've seen it already, what that does with play action. Terrence Ganaway, just been inconsistent, totally capable. Kendall Wright, as explosive a guy as there is in the slot. And on defense, Jamie Blatnick for OSU, the defensive end. There's your bubble screen. This time it's Terrence Williams, and he picks up five. It'll be second down and five, and already That's Baylor on a march to start the game. Daytuan Lowe came up and made the stop. Griffin will keep it. And he is upended at about the 32-yard line. Markel Martin, who has had an inconsistent year for the Cowboys, turned Griffin away, a loss of a couple. It'll be third down at about six. And you have to wonder right now, is this four down territory for our Browns? Conceivably could run the ball right here or throw a bubble screen, knowing that he's going to go for it on fourth down. Here comes a blitz off the edge on third down and six. Griffin to the sideline. He broke it up. Great anticipation by Justin Gilbert. The sophomores had a terrific year at corner, and now decision time for Art Riles on fourth and six in that gray area inside the plus 35-yard line, and he will leave his offense on the field. That's why I'm surprised by that call. I, I really felt that was a great situation, Bob, maybe for a draw, maybe a bubble screen, because you knew he was going to go for it on fourth down anyway. Already some drama on the first drive of the game. Baylor goes empty on fourth down and six. Now they force Oklahoma State to get lined up quickly to the empty formation. Now the coaches see exactly how Oklahoma State's lined up. Play clock at two. Play clock winding down, and Griffin has to call timeout. We'll step aside and see if Baylor sticks with the plan to go for it on fourth down in a moment. Back in Stillwater. Fourth down and six after the timeout for Baylor. And the Bears offense is still on the field. And Coach Davey, we might see this decision made a lot today by both of these coaches. Yeah, Janine talked to Art Browns about unconventional style it takes probably to match Oklahoma State's scoring potential. You're seeing it right here, going forward on fourth and seven. Eighth play of the drive, fourth and six. Griffin under pressure, throws off his back foot, climbing the ladder to make the catch is Kendall Wright, and he's got a first down. What a throw by Griffin with Rashetti Jones right in his face. Great point. I mean, he was not stationary. He was on the move in the pocket and delivered that on a rope for a first down. Griffin to the sideline, somehow losing his footing, trying to come back for the football was Kendall Wright. So it will be second down and ten. I think people that haven't watched Robert Griffin as much as we have will be surprised just how polished he is as a passer. He has tremendous arm strength, plus a very good feel in the pocket and touch. I mean, he is a drop back passer. Blitz comes on second down. Bubble screen to the near side to Lanier Sampson. Inside the 15, pop down at about the 14-yard line as we take a look at Coach Davey's focus points. Well, the first one's perfect because here we are in the red zone. They have to have touchdowns, not field goals. They spent their whole open date scrimmaging offense and defense in red zone. Second thing, defense off the field on third down, and they have to steal a possession. They kind of did right there in some ways by converting on fourth down. That catch by Sampson was good for a first down, so the 11th play of the drive at the 14-yard line. Right motions into the backfield. They run the option, and it's Griffin on the keeper. RG3 spins to the 5-yard line, a gain of 9. 
Hooper Bassett made the stop. Second and one from the five. So you want to be a defensive coordinator in the Big 12, huh? No. <laughs> I have no desire to be a defensive coordinator in the Big 12. Yeah. Not when these are the offenses you have to try and stop. Think about all we've seen. That was the option. You take a look at Bill Young, who's been everywhere in college football. But just think of all the things we've seen, Bob, and that's with a quarterback there that probably runs 4-3. So you sprinkle a little option in. Straight handoff up the middle, and Ganaway has a first down to the two-yard line. So it's first and goal from the two for Baylor. And this is what they worked on right here. The open date, they scrimmaged. They put the ball at the nine-yard line every day, scrimmaged offense against defense. Again, it's Ganaway, and he might have gotten just inside the two. Sean Lewis, the Big 12 co-defensive freshman of the year last year. Knight through to help bring down Terrence Ganaway. It'll be second down and goal. I think right here is an interesting call for our Browse because you worked on toughness in the red zone, running the ball in the red zone. He doesn't really want a play-action pass right here. He'd like to muscle it in because that was his emphasis during the open date. They run the option. The pitch to Ganaway. Fumbles the football, picks it back up, and is knocked out at the one by Caleb Levy. Now it'll be third down and goal and what was nearly a turnover. One thing I mentioned about Robert Griffin, we had him against Kansas State. He goes down a lot of times like he's shot. He takes a good hit right here. He does a good job though of giving ground a little bit, so there's not great impact right there. Alex Elkins delivered the blow on Griffin. 15th play of the drive. Ganaway. I don't think he got there. Inside the one. Again, it was Elkins that brought him down. Now it's fourth down and goal from inside the one. Yeah, he's going to go for it. Because we said they need touchdowns, not field goals. He worked on this the whole open gate, being physical. I don't think he has much choice but to go for it right here. Well, you don't have to wait for the last game of the season. Oklahoma State, Oklahoma for Bedlam. We've got it right now on fourth down and goal at the one-yard line, and it looks like Garth Riles will be call another timeout. They're going to let it roll. And now a timeout is called before the snap. The crowd reacting, they think they got the goal on stand. So do the Oklahoma State defensive players, but a timeout was called before the snap. I think there's some energy the in this stadium right now. To the play. Baylor called timeout. That's their second charge of the first half. Timeout on the field. The crowd doesn't like it, but there's no question that the timeout was granted by the officials before the snap as we step aside for a moment. They put on a show, homecoming here in Stillwater. And already, Baylor has put on a show on this opening drive. Down to fourth down and goal at the one-yard line. The 16th play of the drive and two timeouts spent by Art Riles on this opening possession as well. I know Art Riles would really love to run this ball here because he sold his team during the open date. We need to be more physical and be able to run the ball in the red zone. That was a point of emphasis, but I wouldn't be surprised to see a little pop pass or something. Ganaway. Stop before the goal line. He's going to send a message. Line up in a condensed formation and just hand the big tailback again. Sean Lewis unaccounted for off the edge. Wow, that's twice in that red zone scenario. The backside linebacker, Sean Lewis, came unaccounted for. A 16-play drive, 69 yards down to the half-yard line, and no points for Baylor. Oklahoma State now takes over for the first time, and Brandon Wheaton will not be shot to throw it from the end zone. On first down, pitch and catch to Justin Blackman. And Blackman stiff arms a man. Lost the football. Ruled down by contact. Good enough for an Oklahoma State first down, a gain of 13. 
You mentioned the yards on that drive for Baylor. Yards don't mean anything in this game. It's about points. It's about red zone. It's about turnovers. There's going to be a lot of yardage. Baylor was not able to take advantage of that drive. Trap a handoff to Jeremy Smith. And Smith's out across the 25. He's got another Oklahoma State first down. So two snaps, and already Brandon Wheaton has his offense working. One of the best I've seen. I really enjoyed watching him yesterday on tape. Very mature, very quick release. Total command of this offense. Understands it as well as the coaches. Wheaton goes far side. That ball batted around and almost intercepted. <laughs> Joe Williams was there to knock it away from Isaiah Anderson. Anderson is a junior, normally somewhere in the fourth to fifth range on the depth chart, but with Hubert Anyum knocked out for the rest of the year with a broken foot, Anderson and Michael Harrison, a sophomore, will see a lot more snaps with this Oklahoma State offense. You see Oklahoma State in two backs. They'll give you a lot more formations than a lot of spread teams do. Draw play to Randall. Nice job to move the pile. A gain of six, third down and four upcoming as we take a look at today's Oklahoma State impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Yeah, Oklahoma State wants to run it, but I think their two impact players are two receivers. Justin Blackman, he's the outside receiver. Josh Cooper is the inside receiver in the slot. Four-man rush on third down. Whedon to the sideline. Blackman's got a first down. Yeah, Josh is the inside slot receiver. Really unnatural. Gets his hands on a lot of catches. Good run after the catch. On defense for Baylor, Ahmad Dixon is the nickelback. Kind of a combination linebacker, defensive back. Probably their biggest playmaker. Randall has another lane. Shakes and bakes his way into plus territory for nine more. Nice block by the fullback, Kyle Staley, to free up Joseph Randall. Talked about focus points for Baylor. Number one, getting off the field on third down defense. They had their chance on third down, didn't get off the field. The same problem they had, Bob, in College Station against Texas A&M two weeks ago. Have to get off the field on third down. Play action for Whedon. He goes down the scene for Blackman. Incomplete. Good coverage by K.J. Morton. That was great coverage by K.J. Morton because that was a perfectly thrown ball to a big, strong 220-pound receiver. He gets a little bit of that jersey now. <laughs> that left hand of K.J. Morton had a little bit of that orange jersey. The good coverage down the field. Third down and one. A little hitch to Cooper. He's got a first down. That's basically a running play. When you think about the way these two offenses operate, that's like going off tackle left in the Big Ten. It really is. You know, the college rules where you can block down the field as long as the ball's thrown behind. In essence, they are running plays. And both teams are going to run a lot of those today. Thing we noticed watching tape yesterday, nobody gets that bubble screen out faster than Brand Wheat. His release is incredible, how quickly he gets that ball out there to those receivers. Whedon has to call timeout. So we'll step aside. Oklahoma State, their opening possession, and they're in plus territory in a scoreless game. 12th play of a drive that for Oklahoma State began inside their own one-yard line. First and goal at the six. Trap hand off to Jeremy Smith. Lost the football, but down by contact at the five. This is where your Baylor and defenses, particularly in the Big 12, all these spread offenses, when you get inside the red zone, that field constricts. It's much easier to play defense down in this red zone. Hold them to a field goal. That is the goal, and that would be a major victory right here for this Baylor defense. Second and goal at the five. Five-man rush. Here comes the blitz. Weed to the goal line. Incomplete. 
Bob, why it's so much easier to play defense in this constricted area, as you know, you don't have to worry about depth. You don't have to worry about the receivers running by you. So you play much tighter coverage. So great opportunity. We talked about focus points, third down for Baylor. Here's another chance right here. Third and goal. Here comes the blitz again. Whedon under some pressure. Back in the end zone. Almost a one-handed grab and a flag down. Blackman draws the penalty. It looks like K.J. Morton will be flagged in the end zone. And this will give a fresh set of downs inside the five to Oklahoma State. Pass interference on a defense number eight. Foul happened in the end zone. Ball be placed at the two-yard line. First down. Yeah, just straight man-to-man -man coverage on the outside with K.J. Morton. And Justin Blackman, he was behind him just a little bit. And that's another third down conversion, in essence, for Oklahoma State on this drive. Randall walks into the end zone with a touchdown. His 13th rushing touchdown of the year. Half-yard drive, opening drive of the game. Impressive, impressive. Quinn Sharp makes it seven nothing. Baylor fans, for a moment, thought they might have gotten a third down stop. Yeah, we have a good look at this penalty on third down on KJ Morton. Yeah, good call. Grabbed the right arm of Blackman, and Randall was able to plow his way in the end zone for the touchdown. Oklahoma State with the early seven-point lead. One-yard line of Oklahoma State come away empty, stopped on fourth and goal. Thought they had a third down stop at the opposite end, but K.J. Morton called for pass interference against Justin Blackman in the end zone. And Joseph Randall, who came into today in the top six in America, and total touchdown scored now has 14 on the year. He had four total touchdowns in the win over Missouri last week. And Oklahoma State has the 7 0 lead. You see, the question all day for Baylor is going to be do they have somebody on defense that can make a play against this offense? And can Griffin now answer? Levi Norwood, a couple of yards deep, will bring it out. Doesn't even make it to the 15-yard line, and the ball pops out. Oklahoma State thinks they have it, and they do. A turnover on special teams in the red zone for Baylor. Did we mention turnover margin in the open being a major part of Oklahoma State's success? Andre May comes out of the pile with the football. I'm sure every Baylor at home, Baylor fan at home is hoping for down by contact. The ball's no, out. It's out. These officials do a tremendous job, don't they? We've had two replays, one on a pass interference, one on a fumble, and they made the exact right calls. So the number one plus-minus team in America already with a takeaway on special teams. Here's Randall. Flags down. Randall into the end zone again. Flag back at the line of scrimmage. Illegal shift on the offense. Number 80. Five-yard penalty. First down. Bill Bennett told us he felt like Baylor got stunned down in College Station against Texas A&M a couple weeks ago. Just from A&M's overall talent level on offense, it's one of the best defensive coaches in the country right here, Phil Bennett. I mean, a total rebuilding job at Baylor defensively. Big break right there. First and 15 after the penalty. 
Wheaton off a play action fake. Wide open in the right flat. Ty Staley. He walks into the end zone with an Oklahoma State touchdown. Dejected Art Riles. Yeah, they take advantage of turnovers. That's what they've done all year. That's been the formula for Oklahoma State. First touchdown of the season for Kai St You're watching ESPN College Football. It's the Baylor Bears and the Oklahoma State Cowboys squaring off here in Stillwater, Oklahoma. And due to time constraints, we now move ahead to further action. So the Cowboys take over again. Pretty good field position at their own 31-yard line. They went 99 yards for a touchdown on their opening possession. Whedon to Blackman. A gain of seven on first down. Joe Williams brought down Blackman, and that's just a simple pitch and catch. I don't know. Can you keep on giving that kind of a cushion to Justin Blackman? That's a dilemma. I mean, that's your first response, but you don't have many options. You know, you get up there and play straight man-to-man. -man. There's obviously a risk with that. You see Baylor in a man-to-man -man defense here. They bring a five-man rush, and Wheaton very well protected down the sideline. Leaping attempt almost hauled in by Josh Stewart. Ahmad Dixon was out in coverage on Stewart. And Gary Mason, by the way, is back in the game. The pass rushing end for Baylor. So a bit of good news for the Bears, and it's third down and a short four. This is key. This third down right here, the interesting of, I think, I think uh, Phil Bennett's going to heat them up a little bit. Here they come, straight man-to-man -man coverage. Draw play. Randall breaks free. Joseph Randall. No deep safeties, and Baylor pays for it. Touchdown. See the dilemma. You either spread out with them and die the slow death, or sometimes you get up there in pressure and die the fast breath, die the fast death. Well, there's a reason that they call it a zero blitz, right? Because if you don't get there, and if all of a sudden the draw play finds a crease, there are zero defenders in the middle of the field. And Baylor had no one to stop Joseph Randall. 62 yard touchdown run. And it's a three-score lead for Oklahoma State. As you know, when you blitz seven, you have four defensive backs spread out playing man-to-man. -man. There's nobody left. That's just a straight-line touchdown once you break the line of scrimmage. You're watching ESPN College Football. It's the Baylor Bears and the Oklahoma State Cowboys squaring off here in Stillwater, Oklahoma. And due to time constraints, we now move ahead to further action. Whedon, well protected again. Again, he's got Blackman. Makes a step back move. And Baylor tries to converge. Blackman about a yard short of the first down. He just about got it. Now what does Mike Gundy do? Up three touchdowns. Looks like he'll go for it on fourth and one. I think Justin Blackman wants to go for it. Well, you know Justin Blackman wants to go for it. <laughs> He's going to let this clock run down, give him a chance to think about it a little bit because you do have the sure three. So they'll call timeout with two on the play clock and 4.48 to go before halftime. Will Oklahoma State try on fourth and one when we come back? Oklahoma State with guns ablazing today. 21 0, they lead Baylor. And on fourth down the yard, Mike Gundy called timeout and decided to leave his offense on the field at the eight yard line. And in this little diamond power set right here, three back look. To Blackman. He makes the catch. Touchdown. Well, he wanted to go for it, 
And he made the right decision right there for Mike Gundy. That was a pretty throw. This is about as pretty as you can deliver it over that outside shoulder. I don't think he has possession. I think that call is going to be overturned. It was ruled a touchdown. I guess the question is, does he have possession while his left foot yeah. is still on the ground? Because his right foot clearly lands out of bounds. The and Art Riles, is under review. Art Riles was down the sideline. He was ready to call a timeout because he believed the officials yeah. weren't getting the buzz down from the replay booth that was necessary. But before he has to call timeout, prior to the point after, they do buzz it. Now is the ball in his hands with his left foot on the ground. He's got it, left foot up off the ground, no. right foot out of bounds. That's his first foot down right there with possession. His right foot was on the line. That's a big, big call that's going to be overturned. It's so close to him having possession of the football with his left foot still on the ground. Clearly his right foot's out of bounds, but I guess the question yeah. is, is the right foot the first foot that counts? I thought it was. Once he has possession of the football. Let's see, ball in his hands, right left foot now on the he ground. Has possession, and right now that right foot's on the ground. Well, here's the, the issue, though, Coach. Not, not only was it fourth down, so if it turns out yeah. that they reverse the call, Baylor would get the football. It would almost be the right. equivalent of a turnover. Right. But there has to be indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field, and the call on the field was a touchdown. I think it's indisputable to overturn that call myself. Quick decision. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Wow. Uh, they're going to say his foot was on the ground with the ball in his hands. That takes all life out of Baylor. to nothing. You're watching ESPN College Football. It's the Baylor Bears and the Oklahoma State Cowboys squaring off here in Stillwater, Oklahoma. And due to time constraints, we now move ahead to further action. Not sure how many plays Baylor has in the first half. 56. 56 plays and zero points. I mean, this offense of Oklahoma State is fresh. They haven't been on the field much. Baylor has 19 first downs in 56 plays. Randall walks into the end zone with another Cowboy touchdown. In his last 90 minutes of football, Joseph Randall now has seven touchdowns. We don't talk much about these linemen in this game, but it's a good block right here by Garner, right there up on the second level. Forty seconds to go in the first half. Oklahoma State with a 35 to nothing lead. You can see ESPN everywhere, by the way, on your tablet, on your smartphone, wherever you are. It is amazing. If you showed someone the box score of this game and then all showed them the scoreboard. Yeah. I mean, you, that, that guy just saw it. That's it. He, he, you know what? He didn't have the box score in front of him. All he, he sees is the it. scoreboard. He's seen this before because A&M two weeks ago had 680 yards offense. Oklahoma State last year had 725 yards offense. But this is unbelievable. 56 plays, 250 yards for Baylor, and zero points. They haven't punted yet. And if you're Baylor... You got to be thankful Oklahoma State only has 31 plays because they have 311 yards and only 31 plays and 35 points. And pardon me, one punt, one punt in the first half for Baylor, and they're down 35 to nothing. You wonder if Oklahoma State week to week can continue to live off of turnovers the way that they do, and then every single week they're plus two or plus three in the in the plus minus category. They find ways to take the ball away. Antoine Goodley takes a knee. 
I like the fact that you, during the game, will have a blog while you watch the race that people can follow to get Bob Davies' inside thoughts. NASCAR update. Focus points for the NASCAR. Exactly. Yeah. Ganaway maybe gets a yard. And that might take us to the end of the first half unless Baylor tries to get a few more well, snaps. You know, we do a locker room alert every week. Our locker room alert this week, I was in that locker room of Oklahoma State's before the game. It's the nicest locker room I've ever been in. The plushest. I think Oklahoma State can go in there and relax pretty much and enjoy the plushness of that locker room in this one. Lasko Martin out to about the 28-yard line. What's the locker room alert for Baylor? It's just what we said to start the game. It's about turnovers and scoring touchdowns in the red zone. But you've got to be impressed with Oklahoma State. I mean, this plan has got them to 7-0 and and controlling their own destiny to the national championship game. I mean, they're on fire right now and still want it. Quickly, let's go down to Janine Edwards. What is it? Coach. Coach Riles, not the way you or any of us envision this first half. How do you keep your guys up and fighting at this point? Well, that's what we'll see. You know, that's why we do what we do. If we've uh, got some substance, we'll come out and fight. I think we got substance. Thanks, Coach. That's where being a sideline reporter in college football is not the best job in the world. As Janine Edwards with a depressed Art Riles. Easy to see why the halftime report's coming up. Beautiful day for football in Stillwater, but a nightmare for Baylor. Number three, Oklahoma State, continues to send a message to the country that at 35 to nothing, this is a team that is very real about where they are in the BCS. Bob Wachusen, Bob Davey, Gene Edwards here in Stillwater. It's amazing, too, Coach. They have a formula that seems to work almost every time they take the field. They live off turnovers. They turn them into points, a fast-break offense, and... That's how they opened up yeah, the big I mean, lead the first at, half. Look at the defense in the first half. Three turnovers forced. One was on special teams, but three turnovers. They stopped Baylor twice on fourth down, which really to me is like a turnover because you changed possession. Basically, say that was five turnovers generated defensively in the first half. And to make matters worse for the Bears, Oklahoma State will start the second half with the football. Justin Gilbert fell down, got back up, and got hit inside the five-yard line. Driven back in the end zone, but forward progress will bring the ball back out close to the six-yard line. Herschel Sims made the stop as we check our Pacific Life game summary. And there's a chance that Baylor set a record for most plays without points in the first half as they began the game with a 16-play drive that got shut down inside the one-yard line. And really, that was the a, a copy, a photo of what was coming in the rest of the first half. Baylor with, what, over 50-some plays in the first half and zero points. <laughs> but their inability to stop Oklahoma State. I mean, they have not slowed Oklahoma State's offense down. Bobbled ball. Blackman took his eyes off it and dropped it. It'll be second down and ten as we check in with Janine. Well, Bob and Bob, Coach Gundy told me that he reminded his team in the locker room that they've got to play two halves. He said, remember, we need to respect Baylor. I want just as much energy and enthusiasm in the second half as you showed me in the first. And nothing's changed for them with their highest BCS ranking ever. He said, we're not going to play under pressure. We're not going to coach under pressure. We just want to keep having fun. They had fun in the first half. A little flip to Blackman, and he's brought down at the five-yard line by Terrence Lloyd. So it will be third down and 11 for Oklahoma State at their own five. Yeah, I was worried a little bit about Oklahoma State, maybe a letdown, because they came off the road. They had two big road wins at Missouri, at Texas. Sometimes you let down a little bit at home. And you've been on the road with two big games they circled early in the year. Whedon swings one in the end zone to Randall. And Randall bumped out at about the seven-yard line. Good job by Joe Williams to stand his ground. And Baylor forces a three downs and out on the opening possession here in the second half, and they should get great field position. And you know the drill. I mean, in these kind of games, so lopsided, both coaches go in, shoot, and they talk about it's nothing, nothing. You know, that half's over. That doesn't mean anything. Let's just go play the second half like it's 0-0. You know, Baylor comes out. 
Worst case scenario for Baylor. They came after the punter. Quinn Sharp got it off, and they roughed the kicker. A flag thrown in the end zone. Baylor sold out to block the punt. Brody Trahan, the linebacker, had looked like made contact with Sharp. Is this a running into the kicker or a roughing the kicker penalty? If it's roughing the kicker, that is the equivalent of a turnover. Yeah, exactly. That would be the sixth turnover of the game. I think I just saw a mile five-yard penalty. It wouldn't be a first down. I think that's what Mike Gundy is complaining about as well. And that's a judgment call, so that can't be reviewed on the degree of Running severity. Running into the kicker on the defense. Penalties decline. Push down there. So they'll wave away the flag because Quinn Sharp actually changed field position with a pretty good kick in spite of the fact that he was run into. He got it all the way to the 42-yard line of Baylor. Well, this is one of the best punters and kickers in the country. Boy. Probably a good call. That's not roughing the kicker. You don't I mean, think not even close. He barely even grazed him, and Sharp knew. Now, if you were Quinn Sharp, and you were up in that vulnerable position, up in the air, and that guy hit you in the hip, you wouldn't think that was rough. If I was Quinn Sharp, I'd be walking around on the sideline saying to myself, you know what? I almost got a gold statue for that acting job in the end zone, but it's a close miss. I think that's a good call by the officials. So still pretty good field position for the Bears, and Ganaway tries to take advantage. Close to a first down, a gain of nine. Tevin Reese has the first down. Lost the football. The officials will say it's blocked. The ball wasn't blown dead, and it's picked up by Oklahoma State. Another turnover, and this one could result in points. All the way down inside the 10 to about the 7-yard line goes Broderick Brown. What more could possibly go wrong for Baylor in this game? Because at some point you say, Yeah, the key is going to be, did the whistle blow? Let's listen in and see if we can hear it. I don't hear a whistle there. That's ruled a fumble. Everyone stopped playing. The Baylor sideline is completely stunned in its first and goal Oklahoma State. And it looks like they will not even go to review to see. Another touchdown for Joseph Randall. To back four touchdown weeks for Joseph Randall. And it's 42 to nothing. Four turnovers by Baylor, and Oklahoma State coach has taken advantage of them all. You're watching ESPN College Football. It's the Baylor Bears and the Oklahoma State Cowboys squaring off here in Stillwater, Oklahoma. And due to time constraints, we now move ahead to further action. Well, we've been here before. Baylor just about inside the red zone. Ganaway right up the middle again. Close to another Baylor first down. It looks like he's got it down to about the 12-yard line where it will be first and 10. You see the problem. If you play that two-deep shell, you have to take those linebackers out and cover down. You only have five in the box. It's stealing running the ball against it in there. Here they go now. Bill Young's going to heat them up a little bit. And Ganaway has nowhere to go this time. 
you know, by spreading that field out with those wide receivers so extended. As we know, it just stretches that defense so wide and it makes it so easy to read what coverage they're in. Because you have to spread out and cover down on those receivers. Where in the old days, everybody played in the box. You could disguise things so much longer. Here you have to widen because the receivers are out there so wide. Griffin will keep it this time. Can't escape. Dion Amade was able to grab him around the ankles and drag him down at about the 12-yard line. Gain of maybe a yard, but it will be third down and 10. Griffin under pressure. Now it'll be fourth down. Sacked back close to the 20-yard line. Jamie Blacknick, seventh sack of the year. They really rushed two players on that. They were in a three-man front, and the nose guard just spied, anticipating scramble from Robert Griffin. Blacknick's a guy that's had a great year for them. That's his seventh sack of the season. Aaron Jones missed from 48 earlier. He has not made a field goal in a month. This time from 36. And Baylor is finally on the board. The Bears have to settle for three in the third. You're watching ESPN College Football. It's the Baylor Bears and the Oklahoma State Cowboys squaring off here in Stillwater, Oklahoma. And due to time constraints, we now move ahead to further action. Well, Baylor fans, things for the moment might be a little brighter as it looks like there's the a very good chance is under further review that Glasgow Martin was down by contact they're making the official announcement now that the replay booth is going to take a look on whether or not Martin just fumbled the football down at the one yard line we took a look while we were away during commercial and watched the right arm of Martin holding the ball and it looks like his elbow makes contact with the ground and then the ball pops out right there he's down the ground cannot cause a fumble he had possession until the elbow hit the ground. I think it's going to be overturned. Of course, I thought Justin Blackman's touchdown catch would be overturned as well. Well, you're but one for two. We agree this on this one. I think a little clearer, though. I think this one will be overturned. Yeah, we're going to agree on this one, which if our first thought is right, that would make me two for two in replay reviews for the day, just for the record. Just in terms of keeping crew statistics. So now it's me and you in the booth. It's not us in the booth I'm, anymore. I'm just saying. All the camaraderie, just for today. All the camaraderie we've built during this season. The cohesive unit we've become. Well, let's get the official call. I mean, who's After keeping track? After review, the ruling on the field stands as a fumble and recovery by the defense. They explained that one to me. I would need the replay booth to go a little bit deeper into their determination of whether or not Glasgow Maybe. Martin was down. But you know, the bigger picture... I don't think I've ever seen a team defensively give as many yards and cause turnovers as the Oklahoma State Cowboys have done consistently all year. Blackman can't break a tackle. He's down at about the seven-yard line. Joe Williams is able to slow up Justin Blackman. A lot guess... of good fortune, though, right, in, in, turn, in turnovers. I mean, Baylor... Oklahoma State really had nothing to do with that turnover right there. In my opinion, maybe somebody touched that ball, but it looked like the elbow hit the ground and the ball came out. First down run by Joseph Randall. Well, if you think about it today, is that now five takeaways overall for Oklahoma State? They were minus one in the plus-minus ratio after two games. So in their last nearly now six games, five games plus, they've got 26 takeaways on defense in about five and a half games. That, that's unbelievable. So is this. Blackman has to come back for the underthrown ball. And he still breaks free to the 35-yard line. I know this. They tell their defense, Oklahoma State, if we force a turnover, 
our offense will score a touchdown. And it doesn't matter if it's on the one-yard line or in the red zone. I mean, this offense thrives after those turnovers. Play action fake for Whedon. Wide open is Tracy Moore. I saw something last night where Brandon Whedon wasn't ranked in the top five quarterbacks as far as NFL projections. You, know, you had Robert Griffin was actually fifth. This kid is an NFL quarterback. I mean, you do the Jets game every week. You watch an NFL game in person every week, Bob. With his release, his maturity, his personality. There goes Randall. Down to the six-yard line. First and goal. Oklahoma State. And we've got another injured Baylor Bear. Mike Kicks. One of the two safeties for Baylor is down on the play. I think Whedon is a fascinating kind of dichotomy as an NFL prospect coach when you think about his age how much does that work for him or work against him a 28 year old former minor league baseball player so obviously there's the maturity element that works for him as a guy certainly you know just a, just a, a, a wonderful him. young man it he's works like, for him he's like sitting there talking to Mike Gundy yesterday I mean he is a obviously though be a coach normally though when you draft a quarterback you think you're gonna get a guy that's 21 22 years old rather than 28 years old um, having said that also though from a skill set standpoint, you talked yesterday about his release, about how he throws the football, just a magnificent engineering of the offense. You could see it's been a quick strike offense today for Oklahoma State, but in the nature of their offensive system. Sure. How much of reading, progressions, running through, you know, kind of a pro-style system sure. skill set does I he mean, have? You're guessing a little bit, but just sitting there listening to him talk about other defenses in the Big 12, I mean, he is really smart. And... I give him the benefit of the doubt with that. I mean, I'm, he's one of the top five college quarterbacks in this country. For Blackman again. It'll be second down and goal. These fans want more. <laughs> I mean, it's 42 to 3. They're slinging it, and the fans are booing because they didn't get a pass interference call. It's fun to watch. Randall looking for touchdown number five. Gets to the two yard line. Sam Hall made the stop. We talk all the time about Mike Gundy's skill position players, especially on the edge. He's got two really nice running backs in Randall and Smith, assuming Smith is okay. Third and goal. Again, Blackman on the fade. Oh. Got it again. Touchdown. How'd you like that throw? How do you stop it? Yeah, he cuts the split down. He has a lot of grass to the outside. Those guys spent a lot of time in the summer making that throw. That was pretty. Look how much he's cut down the split almost to the hash. Gives himself a lot of field to work with. And look at that throw. You could not throw that any more perfectly. Impressive. Welcome back to Stillwater. from the Oklahoma State has looked every bit the number three team of the BCS. They have taken the ball away five times from Baylor. Although the Bears to start the fourth quarter are in business, but they've been in the red zone before. Here's Ganaway. Nice move in the side the five, and he's into the end zone for the first Baylor touchdown of the day. Baylor has run 82 plays in the game, and they finally score a touchdown. 
Tell you what, Art Browse right now, it's all about keeping that team going. You can see right now he appreciates the effort of these guys just hanging in there and playing. I mean, it's tough right now. I mean, give Baylor some credit. Give that coaching staff some credit now. So Baylor finally gets into the end zone. The coach's trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. That will go to the national champion. We'll, of course, have the BCS title game for you later on in January. And the folks here in Stillwater know they've got a quarterback. They've got a defense that takes the ball away. And Coach Davey, they have a schedule left where they will probably be the favorite to win every game that remains. It all certainly still points to the Bedlam game against Oklahoma. The last game of the season, that first Saturday in December, as Josh Stewart gets out close to the 20-yard line. But there's no defense in America that will do more to help their team win than Oklahoma State's if they continue to average five takeaways a game, and that's what they've averaged over their last five-plus games. Yeah, I mean, just get the ball back, and they feel like the offense will score touchdowns. But, you know, no Big 12 Conference championship game this year. And that has to help Oklahoma State. I mean, it is right in front of them. If you look at their schedule, they're going to be favored in every game. No conference championship game. I mean, they control their own fate. Look out again. Another jailbreak. Herschel Sims, the true freshman. Touchdown. First carry, you go untouched. What was it, 80 yards? 81 yards untouched. Got a field goal for Baylor. A lot of pride. A lot of pride on that coaching staff. Phil Bennett talked about before, one of the best defensive coaches in the country. That's tough. Oklahoma State has beaten Baylor 14 of the last 15 times these two teams have met. But rarely as lopsided as today. 56 to 10. Well, again, just count the number of guys in the box. That's five in the box. Oklahoma State with five blockers. Now watch how this unfolds. A hat on everybody. The back just patiently waits for the crease. And now you've got a great angle right here to make the play. That shouldn't be a touchdown. That's just poor angles. And now it's just off to the races. A young man highly recruited out of Texas. First carry goes 81 yards, but that shouldn't have been a touchdown. Well, Oklahoma State beating a Baylor team that at one point was ranked 15th this year in the top 25. What team that remains for Oklahoma State, will they not be a favorite to beat? They're gonna be a favorite in every one, but that will be a shootout in Lubbock, Texas. Texas Tech proved last week, last Saturday night, in Norman, they can move the ball. They're a very similar team to Oklahoma State. And Lubbock is a tough, tough place to play. That game would concern me more. Well, they're all going to concern you. But the open date before Oklahoma, going to Lubbock would be the one that I'd circle right now. Just concerned. Hesitation, and now you take a knee. Yeah, as long as that ball didn't cross the plane of that goal line, he doesn't have to come out. One of the funniest shows on television, Tim Allen is the star. Last man standing, all new on ABC. Tuesday night, 8, 7 central. And what has not been a comedy this afternoon has been this game for the Baylor Bears because they came in here with high hopes. They've got a legitimate Heisman level talented quarterback in Robert Griffin. Now, I don't think anyone is going to take Robert Griffin over Andrew Luck in the NFL draft, but if you look just at the numbers that Griffin has put up this season, very much coming into today in the Heisman conversation. But strikeout after strikeout in the scoring area. Turnovers, here's Kendall Wright picking up about eight, maybe nine yards, and 
Oklahoma State has taken advantage of every open door that Baylor has given them today to make this a lopsided game. I think we both thought, and I know our Grouse thought, coming off the open gate, that Baylor would quite honestly play better. They haven't played very well. In stride, midfield, Terrence Williams. He might go. <laughs> Touchdown. <laughs> 73 yard score. Wow, that's what we expected right there. I mean, Oklahoma State left the middle of the field open. That was too easy of a throw. These teams aren't going to just run the ball and get to the end of this game. <laughs> That's quite obvious. I mean, they're going to keep throwing it. Baylor has 530 yards of total offense and only 17 yards on the 17 points on the board. Yeah, let's take a look at this touchdown. What you're going to see is this middle of the field wide open. Look at all that grass. And with that kind of angle, just outruns everybody from Oklahoma State. You're watching ESPN College Football. It's the Baylor Bears and the Oklahoma State Cowboys squaring off here in Stillwater, Oklahoma. And due to time constraints, we now move ahead to further action. So a 36-yard field goal attempt for Quinn Sharp. Here's another thing they have going for. This kid is a heck of a player, this kicker. He does it all. He's the punter, the kickoff specialist, the field goal kicker. And he is now over 85% on the season on field goal attempts. Well, we'll take a look at Coach Speak for this week. Yeah, and this was, we are a big play team, but to win, we have to also be a small play team. And let's think back now. Had it on the goal line the first drive. And I'm talking, he, what he's talking about here is short yardage. Are we physical enough to punch it in? They haven't been physical enough on those small play plays, even though they have 600 yards offense, to make a difference. That's pretty good saying, though. That's pretty applies to this game. Griffin will try the lob to right. Jump ball for that's Kendall be, Wright. That's and he's got offensive it. pass interference, doesn't it? A flag is down. That's Wright offensive. made the catch. And it will go against Wright. Pass interference on the offense number one. 15 yard penalty. Second down. This one's pretty obvious. The ball's in the air. I mean, the defender has a chance to play it as well. Watch Kendall. Uh. They yeah, pushed him and knocked his shoe off. <laughs> You've got to give that I, defensive guy I, a chance. This game's tough enough. I would call the shoe incidental contact, but I agree with you. He was certainly warding off Larry Stevens, so the penalty goes against Kendall Wright. This red zone fiasco continues late into the evening. Well, it, it was the kind of game we expected. Basically, when you add up all the yards, you could have taken the ball and turned this game into college football overtime. Just keep putting the ball in the 25-yard line. And there's a drop. As Wright couldn't hold on, or check that, Williams couldn't hold on. So, I mean, you, you could have taken the ball and put it on the 25-yard line for each team and just said, who's going to do a better job from here executing and getting the ball into the end zone? Because Baylor, when they have had time after time, opportunity after opportunity in the scoring zone, especially in the first half, they either failed or turned it over. Griffin just throws one up for grabs. Another interception. Flag down in the offensive backfield. Larry Stevens gets the pick. And Griffin is shaken up. On a defense number 50. Contact to the quarterback's face now. Half the distance of the goal. First down. That's the third time Oklahoma State has been called for a roughing the passer penalty. And Mike Gundy disagrees. Good call, though. Blatnick got his hand up yeah. on the face mask of Griffin. Yeah, I think the fans, if they'd have called face mask, would have understood that maybe a little bit better than roughing the passer. 
I mean, it clearly was a face mask penalty. Well, the referee did say that. Yeah, he, he said did. it's roughing the passer, contact to the quarterback's that's face what, mask. That's what I'm saying. I mean, but I think there would have been less aggravation by the fans if, in fact, it was a face mask, because it was. Lasko Martin to about the six yard line. crowd that is here is still booing loudly apparently 59 to 17 isn't quite good enough at this point wouldn't you be out at your tailgate with a hot dog in your hand just enjoying the afternoon well this team's entertaining to watch they really are I can see why they stick around because with this defense causing these turnovers Griffin gets waffled at about the two yard line a yard shot the first down It'll be third down and about a yard and a half just inside the two. Here's where you're Bill Young. You know, you leave those starters in here on defense. Unless one of them gets hurt. Yeah, that's it. That's that's the problem. And we've got another Cowboy shaking up. This time it's James Thomas. Well, while the injury timeout takes place, let's take a look at not only what remains for Oklahoma State, but also what remains for the other top two teams in the BCS. Now they will play each other next week, LSU at Alabama. Still to come after that game for LSU, Arkansas awaits, and then maybe a trip to the SEC championship game. And the road pretty tough for Alabama as well. They have to play the Iron Bowl on the road, even if they beat LSU, and then who knows, they might be in the SEC championship game. For Oklahoma State, it could very easily come down to the Bedlam game the last weekend of the season. Obviously the best chance. Well, the other two have no chance to go undefeated, both of them. Danaway moves the pile. That might be good for a first down. This game started this way, and this game's going to end this way with Baylor at the same exact spot on a fourth down trying to score. I'm not sure Danaway got the best spot there. And it will be fourth down at about a half yard. Right, they can pick up a first down inside the one. Yeah. This is unbelievable right here, isn't it? It comes down to this after all of this this afternoon. Now, do you run it right here if you're Art Browse? I think you run the ball. They did to Ganaway. Tried to leap over the pile. Make, he might have a first have down, a first down. And Made smacked him, but it is a first down. He didn't get to the goal line, but he got to the first down marker with 2.20 to go. So now it's first and goal. <laughs> they might get five total cracks at it from inside the one-yard line. Art Browse is tempted to run a naked bootleg right here. You know, they've been bringing the linebacker hard off the edge, number 11. See if he comes with just a bootleg and tricks him right here. How about Baylor about to run their 104th offensive play of the game and trying to get into the 20s in terms of points? Just imagine if Oklahoma State had under his replay. And now Art Browse has to call a timeout oh, as the play clock was all the way down inside of five. They've had a lot of miscommunication in short yardage. Step aside for just a moment here in Stillwater. Welcome back to Stillwater. Number three, Oklahoma State. And they are guaranteed, most likely, unless a shocking development takes place in the next 10 days or so, to be no worse than number two in the BCS standings with Alabama playing LSU next week. After the timeout on first and goal, Robert Griffin tries to sneak for a Baylor touchdown. And it looks like he was stopped short. Did the ball pop out? A couple of players, including Amade for Oklahoma State's defense, thought that they got another loose ball inside the one-yard line. They have struggled in short yardage. You know, you take that shotgun quarterback and put him under center and then try to run the sneak. Now Griffin moves over. Some final instructions for his fullbacks. Tries to sneak again. This is unbelievable. And again, with some second effort, it looked like he might have gotten to the goal line, and now a flag comes out. Griffin's helmet comes off. Still no signal. It might have been a touchdown. Looked like the line judge on the near side finally did signal touchdown, and a flag came out as Griffin lost his helmet.
done is good. After the score, personal foul, unnecessary roughness on the defense number 22. That penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Well, you can get ready for the onside kick now. At 59 to 23. <laughs> Never easy, is it? Aaron Jones adds the point after. It's 59 to 24 with 106 to go. A 21 play touchdown drive for Baylor. So if we update the Big 12 standings, Kansas State falls to Oklahoma. So Oklahoma will move inside of the top eight at the very least as they drub Kansas State this afternoon. Oklahoma State, the only undefeated team remaining in the Big 12. Let's go down to Janine. Well, Bob, you know, back in 1995, Mike Gundy was fired for the first time from a coaching job. And he was out of work for a while. He moved his family to Maryland. He actually almost went into selling insurance. And that's when Les Miles called him to come back here to Oklahoma State and work for him. What was that job he was fired from in 1995? It was Baylor. Oklahoma 58, Kansas State 17. Uh oh. Nine for remaining in the. What do you think, Bob? Onside kick right here. West Virginia 28. I can't imagine you would try an onside kick I down 59 will. to 24. Let's yeah, you might need Aaron this Jones onside kick defense. later in the season. <laughs> Smart play by Gilbert to simply take a knee. And barring Art Bryles calling timeouts, Clint Shelf, who we saw earlier before the 21-play touchdown drive for Baylor, ate up most of the rest of the clock, warming up over on the sideline. He might be asked to do nothing but go out and engineer the victory formation. Now, yeah, I guess the question... He's glad to just get a couple crumbs. I mean, he's been standing over there since the 10-minute mark, just looking for a crumb to fall his way. Nice nice to put your helmet on on homecoming weekend yep. and get in the game for a few snaps. Now, Coach, big picture for Oklahoma State. Can you continue to play Boy. the way they're playing? Can you continue to count on your defense providing the takeaways that Oklahoma State's defense has given them every single week? Well, we said in the open, it's not the old-school plan for success. Obviously, I mean, you win championships, we've always been told, with defense. They keep doing it, but at some point, that is going to run out on them. You just can't keep creating that many turnovers. The only undefeated season in Oklahoma State history was in 1945. They beat St. Mary's of California in the Sugar Bowl that year and ended up 9-0. and And they are now 8-0 and for the first time since then. Say this, even if their defense doesn't create as many turnovers, I think they're good enough on offense to outscore most any team in this country. I mean, they can There's score no on offense. But part of their success is they take anywhere from a plus two to a plus five turnover ratio and turn that into a bunch of points. And you wonder against really good teams like in Oklahoma, I mean, could you possibly play the game counting on that? Yeah, there ain't no having used that same formula. It'll be interesting to see if it continues. Well, still in all, a very impressive win for Oklahoma State. 8-0 for only the second time in school history. 59-24 is your final. And Brandon Whedon's team could celebrate a very impressive win with only four games to go in their season.